guys, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always thrilled to have you. So today's tutorial comes to you about as something that I've been needing to do myself. So anytime I've got something new or something maybe a little treacherous that I'm trying on the studio, I'm like, if I need to learn something, my YouTube fam probably does too. So today we are gonna write our artist CV, which is the short name for the curriculum vitae or vita. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it as I do not speak Latin. But basically the artist CV is kind of like your artist resume, but it's not necessarily for like getting a job. It's more for maybe applying to galleries, getting a grant, getting a residency, or just so you have it on your website so that when people find you, they know that you know what you're doing. Um, so curriculum vitae, vita, vitae, whatever it means, means um, the course of life. So it basically means what have you done over the course of your life that makes you prepared for whatever the heck it is you're trying to do now. Um, this is definitely not a bio and it is not an artist statement. I have a video on an artist statement and you know what, I should work on one. I should do one for a bio too. I don't have one yet, but I will work on one of those for you. But I do have a fantastic video for um, a very exciting, exciting artist statement. If you're interested in that, check around for links. Um, but this is more of like a bullet point list. So. Sit on down, folks. We're gonna do it together. It's not the most exciting thing, but every artist really needs to have one. And lucky for you, you don't need to worry about taking too many notes because you can check down below for my blog post where I will have things nice and neat and written out for you in a list style form so that you can make sure you get everything you need as well as the example of the one that I am doing right now. So I'm so happy to have you as always. I hope you are happy to be here. If you are, pop that subscribe button. It really helps grow my channel. And then make sure you come back for all the good info. Thank you guys. Now don't get too bored. We're just gonna list out your entire life. Hey guys, real quick before we get started, I just wanted to touch on a few things for you to remember. Now, any resume or CV or any of this can be a little daunting, but just make sure to keep it short. Short, 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 short. Tiny, 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 short. Keep it as short as you can. This is not a place where you want the longest list ever. You don't, you think you want three pages to show how much you've done, but you really don't. Honestly, if you can get everything on one page, no matter all of your accomplishments, if you could get it on one page, that would be amazing. People want this short. Trust me, you'll be more likely to have the whole thing read or at least looked over if it's short. And the other thing is there's no super duper right or wrong way. I mean, there's like drastically wrong, but there's no like kind of wrong, you know what I mean? So. You need to make sure that you exclude what doesn't apply to you. Like if there's a section, you know, that doesn't apply, collections, grants, something like that doesn't apply, just ignore it. Just keep that section off and highlight the things that do apply to you. This is your place to make sure that you shine. So anything that's not so great or mediocre or whatever, just leave it off. It doesn't matter. Highlight all of your best, best, best things first. It's super easy, guys. Don't you worry about a thing. things first you want to put your name and contact information on your resume I know Captain Obvious just showed up at the party and told you to put your name on your resume who would have thought but this is important because hello if they like your resume and your contact information is outdated or incomplete then doesn't matter just throw it in the trash right so you want to have your name and I like to have it like nice and big prominent bold the very first thing they see is your name that way you know if they're shuffling around where's that person again where's that Kaylee Bart again boom right there right here here I am here I am pick me pick me right so you want your name phone number email website if you have one a mailing address if you still hang out in 1997 put your fax machine on there you know put all of the uh, pertinent ways to get in touch with you on there. Oh, P.S. Not a bad idea if you're putting your phone number on resumes to make sure that your um, voicemail is relatively professional too. Just thought about that. I probably should check mine. <laughs> uh, formatting and like editing your resume. Um, there are lots and lots of websites out there that have like little resume templates. If you don't know where to begin or how to line things up, I will link below to an example of mine that I'm showing you. Personally, I have found in the past, anytime I've tried to use like resume templates or that kind of thing, it takes me just as long to like get in there and figure it out and delete what I don't want and add my own things and make sure I didn't leave any like example text or any of that crapola. I feel like it takes me just as much time to do that as it does to just pull out a nice clean sheet of Word document and start one myself. And then once you have a really nice resume or CV or whatever, 
you can just keep updating that document for years, you know what I mean? So today I'm gonna do a whole brand new one because I have like a professional resume but I don't have a specific CV. So I'm gonna do mine from scratch. Um, oh, plus I like to use the same font that matches my website. That way if they go to my website, they're like, oh, look how coordinated she is. Oh, what a professional. So anyways, um, those are all the reasons why I'm gonna be doing my own formatting, but I'm telling you, just Google, you know, CV or resume template if you think you need one and then about a thousand will pop up for you. Two is going to be the most difficult step out of the entire CV, okay? I probably, all the rest of it put together will be less difficult than step two. So let's just do it together. Let's just take a deep breath and write our tiny bio. And when I say tiny, I mean teeny, tiny, tiny, like one or two sentences, that's it. Just a tiny little snippet of either who you are as an artist or what is the main focus of your art right now. Um, uh, it should be, it's basically an artist statement that's like two sentences long. And the reason why you want this is because most of the time when somebody's looking at your CV, they've probably already seen your artwork or are seeing them together. But every once in a while, they're not. Every once in a while, someone is looking at you from like a grant or residency or something and they might look at your CV first or they might look at that only. It might not even be about the artwork. There was one residency I was looking into that they literally did not even ask you for photos of your artwork. It was all about your written statement and your CV. So if, if this is all somebody has to go on, you wanna make sure they have at least some kind of little snippet that stands you apart because I know we all think that our journeys and names and all that are fabulous and unique and special, but when there's a whole pile of stuff like that on somebody's desk, it's not. And a lot of um, people aren't going to add something like that. So I think that it can really give you the leg up to literally have one or two sentences that just kind of encapsulate you and what's going on. And that way they'll be like, oh, Kaylee Bird, she's about this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. The, I want to keep reading. And I feel like a lot of times, um, passion can sort of trump or overcome experience. You know what I mean? And especially for some of us that maybe you know, we haven't had a million, you know, <laughs> exhibitions at the MoMA. We're not like all over the world famous, you know, we're not whatever, collaborating with Marc Jacobs, you know, like those kinds of things don't happen for all of us. And so um, it's really, really important to show that, hey, you know, maybe I'm not as far along in my art career, but I am so enthusiastic. I am so passionate about my art. I so want to be there with you guys, whatever this thing is that you're applying for. Um, so I think that's why it's really important. Now, I'm not gonna go into super duper depth about what to write today. Um, if you would like some help on writing a little teeny tiny short bio, what I would suggest is check around for links, look down below. Um, I have a video about how to write an exciting artist statement. And um, that is for writing like, you know, a couple of paragraphs, but if you take the ideas from that and can squinch it down to two tiny sentences, um, I think that's gonna do you really well. And of course, like I said, you'll be able to see my example too. So just, you know, you can even do this step last, but it should be the second thing that people see. So honestly, maybe I would even recommend that. Just keep doing the rest of this video, keep doing the rest of your resume. Let this, let your little bio swim around in your head for a little bit because it is gonna be the toughest part. It's very easy to write and talk about ourselves and our artwork, but it is very difficult to do it super concisely, super nice and neatly, um, with no extraneous information. Like you really want them to be able to read your thing in about six seconds and then be like, yes or no, you know, this person has got something going on. So anyways, yeah, just do it. I know, I know, I know, I know, just do it. It's okay guys. we're gonna do is education now if you have art degrees fantastic that's where we want to put this yay if you don't um, let's say maybe you have a degree in something else maybe you don't have a degree at all then maybe you don't want to put this uh, education is like your first thing after your artist statement you want to kind of put it down a little bit remember there's no absolute right or wrong way to do this so put your best attributes first um, I have pretty good education I'm pretty um, happy with it I have an undergraduate and a graduate degree in studio art with an art history minor um, so I'm gonna put both of those on there and I also have attended two atelier programs which are like super intensive um, traditionally taught 
uh, figurative like workshops. One was a month that I spent in Florence, Italy, and the other was six weeks I spent in Argentine Chateau, France. So that's kind of a big deal. I didn't like garner a degree for those, but yeah, that was uh, pretty intrinsic to me learning a lot about the figure and form in my life. So I'm putting both of those down. Um, I put them down in chronological order. For the most part, you want to put everything most recent at the top of the list and then farther back in time going down so that what you're seeing first is what you both what you most recently did um so um what i wanted to mention though too i know i have some younger viewers so if you are like under the age of 20 you can put if you had anything like uh like a high school or a middle school that um you know were of note if there's something that you know for some reason that would make sense on an artist's cv you can include those but anybody over the age of like 20 should not have anything about their high school or middle school it's just it's just um it seems like you're trying to beef it up if you add those kinds of things now i'm gonna say this as a person who went to a very special middle school i went to the charleston county school of the arts it was like a place i had to get accepted to i was taking practically college level classes from the age of 11 until like 13 like every single day hour and a half um so it was really a middle school of no no it was a big deal for me to be taking those kinds of classes at 11 years old and i'm still not going to put that on my resume you know what i mean so make sure that what you're putting on there is pertinent but don't just try to add on everything you can to beef it up because the thing is is that to you all this is very interesting but the person reading it's not really you know what i mean like they don't less is more and by less i mean like way less so make sure you're just putting down the few pertinent things if you did anything like my ateliers if you did any really big like workshops of note or if you studied under like some kind of like well-known um artist or teacher or something like that that's kind of like a big deal then you can list that you know really really quickly and shortly like that's a nice thing is like it's up to you you decide what are the most important highlights and that's what you want to put into your education section we're going to do any awards honors grants um artist residencies anything like that that sort of is of note that's like okay i've done this extra special thing or i've been recognized in some way um i actually don't have any awards or grants i've never really been one to go after art contests i haven't really applied to any awards i mean not saying that if i did i would like automatically win but it's just not something i've ever really done so you know i'm not gonna include this section i won't i just won't have the heading so it's up to you if you have gotten anything of note like that definitely want to include it that's a really big thing and actually if your education is like like your maybe your education section is not quite as shiny but your award section is put that one first because anytime you've been recognized as being like excellent is a great thing to show we have is exhibitions now if you have a fair number of both solo and group exhibitions I highly recommend you split them into two categories mine starts with solo exhibitions and has them all listed out again chronologically from most recent to farthest back in date um, and then I have group exhibitions same thing now if you've been in a fair number of exhibitions which I have I've been showing for about 10 years um, you don't necessarily want to have like 27 exhibitions listed out and taking up a full page honestly you really don't you might think it looks impressive but if you're just handing something to somebody all they're gonna see is blah 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 blah, blah. like they're not gonna read each one okay they get it so if you have a fair number of them I highly recommend you write select group exhibitions now if you don't have many if you have not been in a lot don't you worry just title a section exhibitions nobody needs to know if they're solo or group you don't need to worry about that just exhibitions list out all the ones you've done if there's just a few if there's a nice handful that's fine if there's not um you can also mm, little tricky trick here write select group exhibitions and leave out just one so what that does if you have 27 and you want to narrow it down to your like top 10 that's good it makes sense select group exhibitions let's say you've only been in four just narrow it down to three and then you can call it select and the person reading it they don't know how many you've actually been in. they just think oh these ones are the best ones the ones that best represent them so you know here's one place where it's not you know it's not false advertising or whatever you're not being fraudulent but you know you're just being a little bit 
selective in how you word things so that, you know, you can sound as good as you can be. I mean, why not? Who doesn't want to sound better on their resume? I never, ever, ever advocate, of course, lying on it. But yeah, just writing, like mine has select group exhibitions and I still have, gosh, about 10 or 11, so I might need to even narrow it down a little bit more. But, uh, but yeah, that's a really great way to show people that you are a professional, you can work well with others, you know how to frame and hang your own artwork and that kind of thing. Um, and again, like I keep saying, if this section is a little bit better than your education or awards or whatever, maybe you want to put this one first. I'm pretty happy with my education, so education goes first and then exhibitions for me. is the bibliography or press. Um, you can title it either one. If you've had any articles written or published about you, you want to put it under this section. Now I've actually had a number of blog posts feature me for the custom portraits. Um, I don't really do those so much anymore. Like I'm still available, but I'm not, it's not like um, such a large part of my business as it once was. So I don't know if I'm going to put that on there. I haven't really decided. I mean, on one hand it was press about my artwork, but it's totally not something that really represents me anymore. So definitely like on everything, be selective. If it's not, really, really representative of where you are right now in your life and the accomplishments you had like for this specific goal, then I wouldn't necessarily add things. I'm kind of on the fence, but I probably won't. But anyways, if you've had any articles, add them in this section. Collections. Now these are places that your original work has been purchased or donated or whatever, but this is um, a place where people, institutions, you know, city of whatever, anybody who's bought your work, you're gonna let them know here. People who are looking at your CV are gonna be curious. Hey, does anybody else think this, this artist is worth collecting? Hence the term collections. So like if you ever entered an award for, you know, whatever town you're from and part of that award, you know, you win and part of it is they buy your painting. You can say, oh, I have been, you know, collected by the city of Auburn or whatever it is. Um, if you have private patrons, you don't want to sit here and like list out the name of every person who's bought one of your paintings. And now this goes to say, let me say, this is more about original work. You don't necessarily want to do all your prints unless your prints are like hand embellished, super expensive, like nice handmade prints or something. If they're just regular prints, don't really count those. You want to count your originals. Um, but if, if you have some here and there, a good way to say is like collected you know, uh, nationally, or you could even say a couple of states, you know, as well as, you know, private collections held in the U.S. as well as, you know, Brazil and France or whatever, you know, if somebody from another country has bought one of your works. If not, maybe list out a few states. Say so like, oh, you know, privately, you know, private collections of, you know, in Texas, Arizona, and, you know, New Mexico or whatever. And that's all you need to say. Like, it doesn't need to be elaborate. Now, this is one of those things that, I mean, obviously you can fudge or straight up lie on, but just don't. Like, it's just not gonna do you any good. And, you know, you would hate for somebody to ever like call you out and be like, oh, who, where, where's that piece? I, you know, you said something in New Mexico. I love New Mexico. Who, who has that piece or something, whatever. So, you know, just be honest here, but you don't necessarily have to go into like extreme detail. They just wanna know that at least a few people have bought your art or thought it was good enough to hang up on their own walls. section that I don't think a lot of us are going to utilize, but just in case, I just want to make sure you got all your best artsy goodness out there, will be the affiliation section. Now that is if you're like part of any Oil Painters of America, you know, association. You have um, some sort of like, you know, affiliation, group club, something that's, you know, kind of stands you apart, of course, that is still in the art vein. You can list it here. the very last one last but absolutely not least is related professional experience okay now this is if you have done any teaching if you have uh, curated art shows um, you know there's all kinds of different things like you know maybe let's say you've been hired to paint a mural those kinds of things can be listed out here things that don't kind of really fit any place else but are still like yeah somebody's paid me to be an artist you know what I mean um, so that's where you want to list this now this 
I would say is the only section where you could decide, you don't have to, but could decide to include a few bullet points that have like certain skills and stuff like that. Um, you know how on a regular resume a lot of times it'll be like, I had this job and these are a few skills that I learned. You can do that on this section and again, I would not be wordy. Do not make it long. There should not be paragraphs. They shouldn't even be full sentences. Like just a few words just to say like, you know, maybe you say like painted a mural. You know, spearheaded four person team on a 16 by 20 foot mural, uh, had to write proposal and earn grant or whatever. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So quick bullet points, but just to be like, yeah, I didn't just stand there and paint. I did this around it. That can really help show strengths. And um, if you got a grant for something up above, maybe what was it for? Let's say you got the whatever, you know, Harper Tree grant or whatever, which I just made that word up. Who knows what it is? Um, uh, and then maybe down here, you're going to say like Harper Tree Grant for creating, you know, works in the forest of a blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So this is where you can kind of elaborate just a little bit. But again, super short, super succinct, super short, <laughs> just short. Just do it short, guys. I'm just telling you, the shorter the resume, the more likely you are to have somebody actually like read it. I'm telling you. It's really not that hard. It's, you know, one of those things you just got to sit down and do, but we got it handled today. It's not a problem. And if you ever would like any further help on writing a CV, a resume, artist statement, putting your portfolio together, or even technical skills on how to improve any of your paintings or works, don't forget, I am available for art consulting. Check down below, I've got a link. There's a super teeny tiny little application just to make sure we're a good fit. But if so, we can get one-on-one -on, -one on webcam and I can help you with all that what artsy ails ya. Thanks for being here, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you very soon. Bye.